funny. Yeah. Okay. All right. What are we doing here? This um, is the last one for the final. final. Yeah, I got my final tomorrow morning. Okay. So, you know, I think I'll do pretty good. But good. That's the best way to go in. Feeling confident. All right. Let Take me part. get up the review really quick. All right. So I I mainly want to go over graphing today because that's okay. like the only thing I'm like uh -huh. the best on. So. All right. Um, uh, almost there. Okay. So, uh, first one I want to do is <clears throat> y equals parentheses x minus three squared plus two. Okay. The format. This sounds familiar. What format is that? Um, vertex. Okay, where's the vertex? Uh, three, two. Which way does it open? Uh, up. And how can I figure out another two points? Here, I'll go ahead and draw it. And then I'll label it afterwards. Yeah, we did this one, I remember. What's how are we gonna figure out that point right there? Um we're gonna do uh so it would just be two, right? Or, nope. or no, we put that's in standard two. format that you can use right. that constant. But when it's in vertex format, <laughs> you can't. We just put in a zero, right? For X. For X. Put in zero for x and solve. What's y come out to be? Um, that'd be zero minus three. Three squared is nine, so eleven. Okay. So that point right there is zero comma eleven, which makes that point over there. You're good on these. You did this almost instantly. Um. And then it would be a lot. It would be six eleven. You got it. That's the lead. <clears throat> yeah. Uh. So now we're gonna do like with radicals. So y equals radical x minus two all in the radical, and then um outside the radical minus four. Okay, on these, you need to know the parent function. Mm -hmm. What is it? Um, I forgot. Well, what would you, what would you guess? Um, so what are they again? The parent function. In other words, the way we're going to graph this is we're going to start with the parent function. We know how to graph that. And we're looking at two transformations here. In other mm -hmm. words, these are all going to be transformation problems. And in order to graph a transformation problem, you have to know what the parent function is. Parent function is y equals square root of x. Mm -hmm. That <clears throat> graphs like that. That starts at 0. kind of goes like that. Both okay. X and Y can only be zero or positive, notice. Mm -hmm. okay. Now we have to figure out the transformation. Let's start with this one right here. First of all, is that <clears throat> horizontal? Uh, that's a vertical. No. Inside the function is horizontal. Outside the function is always vertical. Okay. This is inside the radical sign, so it's inside the function. Mm -hmm. So that makes it horizontal. Which way is it? To the right or the left? Um, it's to the right. Yes, it's the opposite of that sign. Mm -hmm. The standard is x minus h. And if h is positive, which it is here, 
then you go to the right. And it is a shift. It is not a stretch. So it does not change the shape of the curve at all. So mm -hmm. this one is y equals square root of x minus 2. As opposed to that one, which is just y equals square root of x. Okay, now oh. let's do the third one. What is the consequences of that? Oh, so vertical it would be a vertical. It's vertical down four. Right, it's a vertical shift. So I take mm -hmm. my one key point and just move it down to four. So now I know that, that the coordinates on that are two minus four. And still no change in the shape basically does that and that's your final product and that's the best way to do all of these transformations is one step at a time you don't always have to do them in different colors but it helps to understand them if you do them one step at a time uh -huh. okay mm -hmm. all right um here let's do another one uh or actually yeah let's just do one more Right. So y equals root x plus 2 all in the radical, and then outside the radical minus 5. Now, since we just did one, let's apply the first transformation and do that one. Okay. Now, um, in order these the order you do these transformations does not matter unless we're talking reflections. Mm -hmm. in other words, if there's a negative sign in front of the X or in front of that radical sign, then that's a reflection. Those have to be done first. Otherwise, you will get a different graph. So that's the only priority in these transformations. Do all reflections first. So far, we haven't mm -hmm. had one. So, what's the consequence of the plus two? Um, it would be a horizontal negative two. Uh, yeah, right there. And then the um, negative five, he would go down five. Pretty much it. Mm. Now, not totally it. What if I wanted to know that point right there? Because so far, the only point I've really defined is that. In other words, I know what the coordinates on that are, minus 2, minus 5. But I really don't know what the x-intercept is. Mm -hmm. How do I figure it out? Um, so, when you just plug in a... Zero for y. Correct. Solve that. All right, so, all right, so it'd be, you add five, and then it'd be five equals root x plus two, then square both sides, so it'd be 25 equals x plus two, and then minus the two, so 23. Notice how far off my drawing was. Mm -hmm. it's way oh, yeah. Wait, what? That's really far. That's correct. When I'm drawing these things, I really take a... I don't draw them very exactly. Not intentionally. It's just didn't know that that thing looks more like that kind of. Mm-hmm. It's smooth like this, but it's just flatter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so there's our other point, 23 comma 0. And if I wanted mm -hmm. to know this point right here, what I what would I do? Um. Wait, which one? The y-intercept. Uh, plug in a 0 for x. Okay, so y would equal the square root of 2 minus 5. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right. All right. I think I'm good on this. Okay. Um. Okay. So yeah, I'm good on this too. All right. Uh, I just want to go over again the properties of exponents because I feel that's the only thing to get on. Shoot. Again. Um. Here, all the problems we've done already. Do you have any? Like you could just sure give me. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so that will just be x to the eighth, right? Uh-huh. And then, oh, yeah. Uh, that will just be, um, it will just be one, it will just be, yeah, one-fifth. Or it will... We're, yeah, one to the fifth power, right? What's the base? A three. That's what it starts with then. And now, what oh. are the exponents of both threes? One is a five. What's the other one? A one, so it'd be six. And what are you supposed to do with the exponents when you're dividing the base? Oh, subtract, so it'd be four. Okay. So, quick, so why, why, why wouldn't you divide the threes? You just don't. For the same reason we multiply the x's. When you have same base, different exponents, the answer is same base to the sum of the exponents. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll give you an example. 2 squared times 2 cubed. Well, we know so... that that's 4 times 8, so we know that's 32. Mm-hmm. So the answer is 2 to the 5th, we're adding the exponents, and 2 to the 5th is 32. Okay. Okay. And how about this one? All right, so that would be, um, so would you just do eight, I, I think you do eight times seven, so it would be three to the 56 power. You got it. In other words, you're always doing one level less. We are multiplying mm -hmm. because we're exponentiating. Multiplication is less than exponentiation. Mm -hmm. Now, the parentheses are actually pretty important. What's that number? Um. <laughs> what do you mean? All right, so that would just be nine three ninths, right? It's three three nine. Well, actually, you start at the top. In other words, you do three to the third. So, because I have no parentheses, it becomes three to the twenty seventh, which is a ginormous mm -hmm. number as opposed to if I have parentheses, now I can apply the rules of exponents and multiply them so it becomes three to the ninth, which is a big number, but nowhere near three to the 27th. So okay. parentheses make a big, big difference. Mm -hmm. um, how about, about this. So that'll just be um what's six. different what's different about this? Um you have different bases, right? Yeah, different bases but same exponent. So you can't do that, right? Well, actually, you can. It's yeah. three so, times two to the so four. six to the four. Or uh -huh. yeah, six to the. Uh, wouldn't it just be six to the eighth though? Because like. No, you don't add the no? exponents when the bases yeah. are different. 
and you're going to turn it into the right hand side, it's kind of like the opposite of the other one where you don't do anything to the bases. Here, you don't do anything to the exponents. So when the bases are different, you just don't do anything. When the bases are different, the exponents are the same, then you can do this. Same thing with this. That's three halves to the fourth power. Mm -hmm. and you can go either way. Okay, last question. All right, so you can't do anything. Exactly. You've got different bases, different exponents. I mean, I could turn it into 8 times 81, but if there's variables involved, you can't do anything at all. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, other exponent problems. Um, I don't know if you've had these or not. You had anything that looks yeah. like that? No, no. Mm -mm. No? Okay. Well, it's not. No. You've had logs, though, right? Logs? You haven't had logs? Logarithm? Mm -mm. Doesn't ring a bell, no. Okay. No, you, they, you would remember it if you've had it. Um, logs kind of go with expon exponential expressions like that. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't had one, you probably haven't had the other. So what else on your review material are you unsure of? Um, uh, that number. <clears throat> Let's just do a few simplifying rational expressions. Cause... Okay, that's that's okay. good practice. <clears throat> Want me to get you some? One, uh, yeah, I, I got them. Okay. So, first one is, um, so b minus 1 over b squared plus 2b minus 3. Okay. What kind of problem is this? Um, uh, factoring. Factoring, yeah. Always. Whenever you see a quadratic, think factoring problem. Well, I can't factor the top, but I can certainly factor that bottom. Into what? Um, so it'd be B's on both sides, and then it'd be <clears throat> positive three, negative one. Now what can I do? Um, cancel the B minus 1. So what's the answer? 1 over B plus 3. So when you cancel, does... So when you're able to cancel, they one of the um, things you're canceling always has to be, like, being multiplied, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. In other <clears throat> words, if I have this can't cancel the B's. Mm -hmm. Only time you can cancel them is if they are a pure multiplier. Okay, you got any others? That was not <laughs> simplifying radicals, but that was simplifying rational functions. Maybe that's mm -hmm. what you said. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay. Um, all right, that one looks easy. Um, Think factoring. All of them are factoring. Right, let's see this one. Five x squared minus four x minus twelve over three x squared. Uh, minus fourteen x plus sixteen.
Back to the top. All right. Um. All right. So it would be step by step. Five X and then X, and then they would both. So it would be. Um. They would both be subtraction signs. No. Or one would be a. Um, one would be addition, one would be subtraction. And because the coefficients of the x term are different, I have to allow for the opposite, which could be different. Mm -hmm. okay. So, and then, uh, I'm going to go with, like, just 6 and 2. Let's go with the... Or 3 course. and 4, 3 and 4. I would yeah. go with 3 and 4. Uh-huh. Does that produce a middle term that has the number four? Um, that would be, no, it doesn't. Okay. In that case, it would not do any good to take the three down to there. The only thing I can do is swap them and put the four on the left and the three on the right. Does that produce a middle term with the number four? Um, wait, so what was the question? Does that produce the middle term? That's the name of the uh, game here, is to randomly words. try factors of 12 until you produce the middle term. No, it doesn't. Okay, again, doesn't do any good to drop them, so I can't use 4 and 3. 4 and 3 don't work. So we'll try the next two closest. What are the next two closest? Six and two. Okay, let's try six there, two there. Does that produce the middle term? Um, that would be six. Middle term no. comes from the no. inside and the outside combined. Yeah, it doesn't. It does. Is it produce the correct uh, side? Six X. Yeah, totally. there's yeah. Two things. There's producing the correct number, and there's producing the correct sign. And it does. It produces minus 4x. Mm -hmm. Now that, we got lucky on our second try. Now, not too bad, considering how many factors of 12 there are. So that's that factored. Now let's factor this other one, bottom one. In other words, what these really are, are exercises in factor. All of them. Mm -hmm. Really doesn't have much to do with division. It's all about factoring. Just remember mm -hmm. that. So split this up. So it would be um, <clears throat> 3x and x, and then uh, it would be a negative and a negative. And then, um, I'm gonna go with four and four first. That would be that would not be the right thing. And then I'll go with a and two. That would be negative x. 6x. Close. But yeah. Still or, yeah, no, no. no. Yeah. Oh, it does do. What am I thinking? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I was so... thinking 13. I was doing the math wrong in my head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, if that one didn't work, I would just swap them. I would try the 2 on the left and the 8 on the right. Because that's mm -hmm. going to be different. But this does work. Mm -hmm. So. And like flats. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now that we've factored, let's get rid of that. Do some crossing off. What do we have? Um, so box? then cross off x minus 2. And then it'd be 5x 
Plus six over three. That's how you do it. Mm -hmm. Want to do one more, or are you good to go? Uh, I think I'm good. Okay. Congrats. Congrats on a good score in advance. I think you could, you'll be <laughs> fine on it. Thank you. All right, Blake. All right. Thank you very much. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.